Hey guys, this is Jurgar of Nerf Dialogue, and I will be going over the last fight in the Vault of Eternity. This fight is a three-phase fight. Phase 1 starts when you pull him and goes till 75%. Phase 2 starts at 75% and goes to 30%. And Phase 3 is from 30% until the end. And in between phases, you will have a platforming sequence where you have to jump down various platforms as a group, but we'll get to that later. Phase 1, when your tank pulls, he starts invulnerable for a few seconds, so give him some time to actually get some threat on the boss. The only raid damage going out is a bluish-green AoE that spawns on the pylons. It does maybe 800 or 1000 a tick, so just move out of that. If you'll notice, the center platform has three different layers. You've got the center circle where the boss is, you've got an inner circle, and then you've got the outer circle. And this is important, that when he goes to 75%, he'll do an emote. And everyone in the raid has to run to the outermost circle. You'll see we're doing it now. Because the platform will break away, and you'll have to start platforming down as a group. See those ancient pylons that we're killing? The boss has a, he has a buff on him, a 5 stack electric buff that powers up his abilities. And for every pylon that you kill, it takes a buff off, so make sure you kill at least 5 on your way down. You'll notice that we're moving as a group stopping every once in a while to group up and heal because we are taking fall damage. You'll also notice that sometimes the platforms don't spawn right away, so don't get freaked out if you don't see a platform to jump to, they take some time. The platforming sequence is the exact same every time, although there are two different paths you can take depending on which side of the ring you start out on. Phase 2 starts as soon as he's knocked down all the platforms. You'll see he's knocking down platforms as he goes. So once he knocks down the last platform, he comes to the bottom and Phase 2 starts. Phase 2 introduces a few new mechanics. One is a mine trap. I'll get to that in a second. Another one is he spawns lightning balls from the outermost pylons that follow raid members. And a third one is he picks a random raid member and picks them up and throws them around the room and does heavy single target damage. So you'll see the first mine trap just spawns a little bit to the boss's left. And what happens with that is... It entraps a single player, and you have to DPS them out of it. It has about 20,000 health, so when that spawns, you have to kill those. You'll also notice the lightning balls. They spawn from the outermost ring every 10 to 15 seconds. They chase down a single player, though they're fairly slow. They'll do about 2k damage to anyone it passes near, and then when it explodes, it does about 8k damage, so those are very... you really have to watch out for those. Also, the third mechanic is the toss. He picks a single raid member, he tosses them around the room, he'll hit a few walls, it does about 8,000, maybe 9,000 damage. It's pretty heavy single target, the most heavy single target damage in this fight besides the tank. So, make sure your healers are on top of that. And that's pretty much phase two. You'll see that the mine traps come up every 20 to 30 seconds. Inside the mine trap is a, a phased kind of instance where you 1v1 against a normal mob and phase 3 is about to start. Another platforming sequence, we go down, we group up, we kill the pylons along the way. Remember phase 3 starts at 30%, or phase 2 ends rather at 30%. And so we group up, we're killing pylons, we're healing up. Pretty much the same as the previous transition, although the platforms do spawn in a different sequence. Phase 3, a few new mechanics will be added. You will still have mine traps. You'll still have single target throws. You will have two lightning balls instead of one. He will be invulnerable at the very beginning. He will have a shield that absorbs all damage. And that has to be taken off by the last new mechanic in this phase, which is a spinning yellow, yellowish brown object will spawn uh, above your heads. And uh, it'll sit there for about, you know, 10 seconds. And then when it comes down, It'll take off the shield if he's standing underneath it. Make sure your tank is careful in positioning him underneath the yellow thing so that when it comes down, it'll take off the shield, otherwise you won't be able to damage him. Note that that yellow object will do heavy raid damage to anyone that's directly underneath it. It's about 15k worth of raid damage, it'll kill most people. It might not kill your tank, depending on how good your, his gear is. So you have to make sure that your tank is positioning him such that the boss is underneath it, but no one else is. 
you'll see phase three starting he's in the shield what we do is we have our dps just spread out around the boss since we can't damage him yet so we just have them waiting for the first mine trap while the tank is positioning the boss to get hit you just saw that the mine trap is it's just a inner phase kind of thing a 1v1 against a normal knob he is fairly low health you don't even need to kill him if you don't want to so you see he's down, we're, we're getting some damage on him right now. We got about 10 or 11% off. Uh, he does have an enrage of about 6 minutes 30 seconds, so you will be fighting against the clock a little bit here. Uh, we have our healers toss in some DPS whenever they can, but that's a preference. The mine traps speed up a little bit towards the end. You can get behind if you're not careful, especially because you should be switching to the boss whenever he's vulnerable. So if you're not careful, you might get behind on the mine traps. What happens uh, if you don't kill the pylons on the way down is that if you don't remove the five stacks of his electric buff, his abilities do significantly more damage. His, his throw will almost one-shot you. It'll do about 14,000. He also gains access to a shockwave ability that does about 5,000 damage of extra raid damage. And the lightning balls also do extra damage. The buff itself will go away every time he uses an ability. So if you forget a pylon or two, that buff will remove itself once he burns through it. But it's extra raid damage that you don't need to deal with as long as you keep to destroy the pylons. It is important to note that when someone is being thrown around the room, they cannot be healed. So you have to make sure that they are at close to full health. Someone is in a mind trap, they can't be healed by anyone else, but they can still heal themselves. But the mind trap does not do that much damage, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. There you saw a close up of the spinning yellow thing, what your tank has to be looking out for. It spawns above. And that's pretty much the fight. Uh, I hope you guys have similar success in your own raids and that you continue to look back to our guild for boss guides in the future. Good hunting, guys.